before we get started in this video, I'm going to drive around a little bit. And if you want me to do a whole video, I guess, touring base a little bit, I can do that. Let me know if there's any interest with that. Look how cute. Yeah, there's still a ton of snow everywhere. But this is what the outside of my neighborhood looks like, guys. Hello, hello, hello. This is gonna be a video about moving to Alaska tips, and it's gonna be specific to military families. My number one tip that I always tell people is to save as much money as you can before moving here. It is so incredibly expensive to live here, especially for military families, because stuff is just... <laughs> I always hear people say, you know, what snow gear should I buy before coming? What type of snow gear should I get? Don't buy the snow gear. Don't get it in the lower 48. People are moving through these areas so often, specifically at Jay Bear and Wainwright. Those are the bases that I know about since we're at Wainwright. And people are moving here so often that they're always selling stuff. Like you, for, if you have kids, you can get incredibly cheap snow gear that's still in great condition for you know, a quarter of the price that you would in the lower 48. And if not that, they're always having sales in the summertime. Like I got my daughter snow boots for $7, $7. How can you get, you know, amazing snow boots for $7 in the lower 48? So don't spend the money. It took us about, I want to say four ish weeks for our household goods to arrive. So what my husband did is that he drove up with our dogs and he took the ferry. I flew because I was very, very pregnant at the time. So my biggest tip with that is to do a little bit of research along your drive. The biggest mistake that he made was the fact that he didn't kind of pre-plan where he was going to stop and sleep. So he ended up having to drive you know much further while tired in order to find proper places to sleep so try to plan your route a little bit it's going to save you in the long run it's going to save you money you're not just going to stay at you know random hotels that you find along the way and it's going to save you if you're in an area that doesn't have gas you can pre-plan where to fill up gas it just makes your life a lot easier so pre-plan the trip if another thing that you should definitely do before arriving is if you have pets give them all of their vaccines everything before you arrive get a health cert they usually last about 30 days from my experience that's what they've lasted 30 days my husband was able to get it when we were at Fort Benning Georgia and he drove up to Alaska with it with our dogs and it's just a lot cheaper everything in general outside of Alaska is a lot cheaper so if your dogs or cats or whatever animal you have you know need a little bit of uh, medical care, try to do it before you arrive. And again, get the health cert. Don't forget. Another thing that's incredibly important to remember is if you need to winterize your vehicle, which is where they put the plug in because you have to plug in your car if you're at least at Fort Wayne, right? I'm not quite sure about j -Bear. But if you need to winterize your vehicle, make the appointment as soon as you can. Things are harder to get up here, you know, once it's um, winter time. So if you're arriving in the summer, you're going to see that there are going to be so many appointments booked out and you're going to be like, what the hell? How do I find time to be able to winterize my vehicle? Pro tip, if you can, please, if you can, I am telling you, book the appointment in advance. I wish I had even done that before. Like before I even got here, I wish I had booked the appointment. If you have the ability financially to get auto start, I highly recommend it. It saves your life so many times, especially if you have kids. So get it. It's going to, it's, it's going to save your life. I promise you. If I want to say that we spent around four to $600 to have our car winterized. You can do it at home if you're a car savvy person, but if you're not, you're going to spend about four to $600 per vehicle to have it, uh, <laughs> winterized it's a pretty penny if you are also a person that really likes home decor and that kind of stuff i highly 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 recommend buying all of your furniture if you're a newly married couple and you need furniture if you're a family that had a new baby and you you know you need nursery decor buy everything before you arrive here there is at, at fairbanks there's a walmart there's a fred meyer there's an old navy I want to say there's like a Sadler's, but it's so incredibly expensive. Nothing is worth it. So if you have the ability to buy it before you move, buy it and send it with your HHG. Another thing that's just so incredibly important. As soon as you arrive here, I highly recommend finding a community. I know myself, I have a difficult time, you know, going to like play dates and community events. I just oh, never really cared, I guess, to do it. But in Alaska, it's important. Don't let yourself self-isolate. I have a habit of doing that myself. It's so easy to kind of 
get into like a little hole at home when it's winter time. There's a ton of community support here. There's not enough. Obviously, there's not enough. So it just helps a little bit, especially if you have kids. There's the USO. There's MWR events. There's a Fairbanks Ladies Meetup page if you're here in Fairbanks where stuff is going on almost every day. You find your little community. That way you can not be alone while being here. And childcare is hard. So fair warning on that. Childcare is near impossible to find here. So if you're a family that's going to be living on one paycheck, save as much money as you can before arriving here because it is difficult. If you are a family that's moving here and you are a family that has multiple kids, you should definitely reach out to WIC. I know that a lot of people that move here, they think of WIC and they say like, oh, we would never qualify, you know, when we live in another state. The cost of living here is so high that the numbers for um, who qualify for WIC are completely different and they have a ton of resources up here in Fairbanks at, at least. So I would definitely recommend reaching out to them, seeing if your family qualifies, if not, what resources they can maybe provide you with. They have so much stuff to help you and other community organizations. Like I said, USO is amazing. They have a ton of family activities. They have a ton of, um, if you have a service member that's deploying, they have a ton of support for deployments, things like that. I think that's all the tips I can think of off the top of my head. If you want me to do a sort of, I guess, part two, or you have any specific questions, um, you can comment them below. I'll respond. Or you, or you can DM them to me on Instagram. People do talk a lot about how horrible it is here. Uh, it is rough, I'm not gonna lie. People are definitely right to an extent, but it is also an incredibly amazing experience. Alaska is a beautiful state. If you have the ability to travel and go see it, I, I cannot recommend it enough. You'll have an amazing, amazing, amazing time traveling around this state. So try to stay positive. It's not horrible. Anyways, guys, thanks for joining me. I'm just chilling at, at home in my driveway in my car. I'm going to be posting every day for the entire month of April. If you want to see any specific videos, let me know. If you want me to do more PCS tips to Alaska or just, you know, PCS tips in general, that works too.